Happy New Year's Big East Hoops fans. I'm Megan Caffrey. Welcome in to the Big East studios. My partner in crime, John Fanta, is out today. He's been traveling all over on about six planes, two trains covering Big East men's and women's hoops. So you just have me today. And there is so much to get into in today's show. Friday night is the marquee matchup that everyone has been waiting for. Number 20, Marquette hosting the 24th ranked DePaul Blue Demons. We'll get into that matchup in a little bit. However, first, this past weekend was the first weekend of conference play, and three teams remain unbeaten, one of whom are the Butler Bulldogs. I sat down with Tori Schickel and Whitney Jennings and spoke all about what they did in the offseason and throughout non-conference play that set them up perfectly for Big East play. Welcome into the Big East studios, the Butler Bulldogs guard Whitney Jennings and center Tori Schickel. Thank you two so much for joining me and Happy New Year. Absolutely, Happy New Year. With wins over Villanova and Georgetown this weekend, your team is off to your first ever 2-0 start in conference play. How does this undefeated start show the growth of this Butler squad? Yeah, I mean, I think... We had a great non-conference, so we're excited to, you know, start Big East play 2-0. Um, but, you know, I think it just goes back to, uh, you know, the standards we set, you know, following the end of last season and in the summer and the fall and how hard we've been working. So we're excited to see all of that, you know, paying off and be just hoping to continue that um, as the year goes along. What were those standards that you set? You know, I think coming in every day and just working as hard as you could, I think, you know, starting conditioning last spring, um, we knew we wanted to be the most conditioned team out there every single day. Um, you know, we, we really wanted to work on some of our weaknesses um, individually and then coming together and, you know, switch up kind of some of the things that we were doing defensively, making that a focus for us um, coming into our games and then uh, offensively just doing what we do every day. Those two games were road games that you won this weekend. So how does a road sweep in the Big East set the precedent for what's to come of this team in conference play? Yeah, I mean, I think we're an experienced team. Um, you know, we start three seniors and two juniors. So I think having that experience, and we've been through this, the Big East season is a grind, but we know that we're very capable of going on the road and getting two wins in a weekend. So. Um, yeah, I think knowing we're confident in that and our experience and, you know, how much growth we've had over the last couple of years. With all of that experience, there's a lot of chemistry on your team, too. How would you describe the chemistry amongst yourselves? I think right now, you know, it's just really fun. We're all trying to keep it really light. We're really close with each other. The locker room's a lot of fun right now. You know, obviously winning helps out a lot, but it's just a fun environment to be around. And I think, you know, it's one of the first times that everyone on our team has clicked really well. Um, so we're just excited in the direction that we're going and to have fun with each other every single day. Who on the team keeps it the lightest? Oh, I'd say probably Cat Strong. She's pretty much clowns around a lot, but she knows when to take it seriously too. But she's yeah, fun to have, have around. We actually have quite a few characters. Well, absolutely. <laughs> so it's a fun, it's a fun atmosphere, and um, I think you know one thing that's really helped our success is we're just really invested in each other, and you know. Um, I don't know, I just think when everyone cares about everyone and you're so happy to see Tori score 20 or Michelle score 20 or whatever, um, you know, as long as we get the win at the end of the night, we're all, it's a happy locker room for sure. Coach Godlewski talked a lot about your defense after these past two wins specifically, saying you guys really dug in. How would you describe the defensive effort that you've been putting into? Yeah, I think that's really kind of what we focused on the whole offseason. Um, we knew that was where we were going to have to dig in, you know, a lot of times we can score on people, but it's if we can get stops, and that's really kind of what sets our pace for our offense. Um, so, you know, being able to dig in and get stops is really important for us. Um, and then, you know, basing it off of what we do instead of what other teams are doing offensively um, you know, and really just sticking to our principles is really important for us moving forward. What do you do offensively? Well, offensively, I think right now we're getting a lot of inside-out touches, which is really nice. Um, you know, they're doubling will and post, which makes um, – gives a lot of our other guards open shots, which is they've been knocking down really well. Um, and just getting the, a lot of that ball movement and taking care of it and paying it up, playing at our pace is really important for us right now. Being able to play inside out is really what we want to do and then just taking care of the ball and making smart decisions. And um, yeah, we're really confident in that right now. And you, you're home for your next two games this weekend against Seton Hall and St. John's. What are you looking forward to to staying home this weekend? Yeah, 
We haven't been in Hinkle since like the 17th, maybe, so it's been a while. So we're excited <laughs> to get back, play in front of, you know, our home crowd. Um, we have two really tough opponents coming in, um, but we're excited for the challenge. And, um, you know, we're, you know, to build on our 2-0 record and um, see what we can do. It's the new year, 2019. What are some maybe resolutions that you two have? Oh, I think I, I was asked that the other day, actually. Um, for me, I would say maybe try to spend like less time on social media and try to save money, too. That's yeah. always a big one. Speaking like, my language, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. I don't know. And I think for me, like, I don't know, just always having that positive attitude and schoolwork and like, you know, making those relationships, new friendships, I don't know, just kind of continuing from 2018 and making it better in 2019. Play for a Big East Championship maybe in there? Absolutely. That's, of course. Yes, absolutely. NCAA tournament, NCAA Big training. East Championship, those are definitely some goals on our horizon. And now it's all about checking them off the list. Tori, yes. Whitney, thank you so much for joining me. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks for having us. The Bulldogs aren't the only 2-0 team in conference play. The Marquette Golden Eagles are also sitting at 2-0 in Big East play after the first weekend. And they face the DePaul Blue Demons at home this Friday. It's the marquee matchup that everyone has been waiting for. The showdown between the preseason co-favorites. The rematch between the 2017 and 2018 Big East Championship game. Two high-powered offenses who really love to put up a ton of points on the scoreboard, and it's a thriller that everyone is surely looking forward to. Let's take a quick look at this matchup right here. Pretty evenly matched. The two high-powered offenses you can see right there. Blue Demons averaging 86.5 points per game, and then Marquette averaging 84 points per game. Since 2013, guys, get this, the games have finished with scores of over, three games have finished with scores over 100 points, and 13 meetings have seen 90 plus finishes. So we know what is in store for us coming up on Friday night. The DePaul Blue Demons, they're 10 and four on the season. They really challenged themselves in the non-conference playing both UConn and Notre Dame. And after falling to Creighton in their first Big East game, they bounced back with a big win over Providence. Three Blue Demons are averaging 12 or more points per game with Ashton Millinder leading the pack. She has 13, she's averaging 13.8 points per game. She's ranked 19 in the nation in three-pointers. And she's gonna be the biggest threat beyond the arc to the Golden Eagles. Now let's take a quick look at Marquette. Alizea Blockton, she leads Marquette in scoring, averaging 16.5 points per game. She did miss the Golden Eagles' last game against Creighton. She left Marquette's first game against Providence early with an ankle injury and is day-to-day. -day. It's going to be really exciting to see if she'll be back on the floor for them. However, without her, it's next man up mentality for the Golden Eagles. Selena Lott stepped up when her name was called in the Creighton game. Head coach Carolyn Keeger had high praises for her, saying Lott stepped up in a huge way. And coach Keeger wasn't surprised at all by her success. And so although Blockton is the key cog to this offense, the Golden Eagles have four more 1,000 point scorers. And then they know that they can go to their bench where they have plenty of depth there so it's going to be really exciting i know i'm going to be tuning in got my popcorn ready for me on friday night you don't want to miss that big east matchup there is one team who has faced both of the preseason favorites already that is creighton they opened up their season against number 19 then ranked DePaul. They beat DePaul then, and then two days later, they did fall to Marquette, but there are so many learning opportunities from experiencing these two tough teams in opening weekend of conference play. Against DePaul, Brooke Kissinger and Aubrey Favor, they combined for 39 points, and this was kind of a coming out game for Kissinger. She had a career high 20 points, going seven of eight from the field, and she was just unstoppable. She came into the game, get this, with six threes through her first 35 games. Yeah, and she finished with six from beyond the arc in that win. And although Audrey Faber does lead the team, averaging 17.1 points per game, she leads the Big East in scoring with that as well. Kissinger was able to come out and show her value as well in that game. And then when they did face 
Marquette, it was a little bit of a different story for the Blue Jays. They looked a little bit slower. And you have to remember in their game against Marquette, Marquette was playing without Big East preseason player of the year, Alizea Blockton. So the Blue Jays fought hard, especially from the beginning. They came back from a 19 to eight slump and they were able to tie it at 19. However, the Golden Eagles, they did run away with it in the end with all five starters, finishing in double figures. So if you're Creighton, what do you have to do? You have to look at these first two games and you have to take the great learning experiences from them and see what worked, what didn't work, what can you build on now. The Blue Jays are home, they face Villanova up next, so they get to resettle a little bit and see what they can build on after that really tough opening weekend. Seton Hall is also unbeaten in conference play. They only had one game opening weekend. They played at St. John's. However, they are the third team in the Big East who has yet to have a blemish on their record. They beat St. John's 77-67 to at home. And the story of this Seton Hall team this year is this new high-powered offense that they have put into place. And it's showing. Four players finished the game in double figures for the Pirates. Inya Butina led the way with 19 points. And she was injured earlier in the season, her first three games back from injury. Butina has averaging 17.7 points per game. I was on that game with John Fanta and Kim Adams, and we had the opportunity to, spoke, to speak with head coach Anthony Bazella before the game, and he was just talking about the significance of getting the ball to Inya Butina out with out at 47 feet out and letting her then take it from there. He didn't want her running up and down the entire court because he said she'd get exhausted. And it shows when you're able to do that. Butina finishing with 19 points right there. And then you can see Nicole Jimenez, 16 points. She's also a threat from three, especially. She leads the Big East in three-pointers, averaging 3.3 three-pointers per game. And so you can see it right there, 77 to 67, Seton Hall over the Johnnies, a really exciting rivalry matchup for them. The Pirates putting in that new offense, and it's showing. They're ranked third in the Big East in scoring offense, averaging 81.2 points per game. And it is showing what happens when you put in a new offense. There's so much action to get into this weekend. Let's take a look at the slate of upcoming games that we have. Three Big East teams are on national TV this weekend. DePaul at Marquette, like we mentioned earlier, on Friday on FS1. And then on Sunday, you'll have two games on national TV. St. John's at Butler on FS2 and Georgetown at Creighton on CBS Sports Network. I am, however, I have my eyes on this Seton Hall Butler game on Friday night. They're both unbeaten, like we said. Butler with two wins on the season, and Seton Hall with only one win on the conference season. So one of these teams is going to walk away with a blemish. So who's it going to be? We don't know. It's going to be so exciting to see how all this plays out. You can watch all of the games that aren't on national TV on the Big East Digital Network on your Fox Sports Go app. Get your phone out, put it up there, maybe then have the national TV games on your TV. Right, you can get a little bit of the best of both worlds. That's what I'm going to be doing. Thank you so much for joining me. Tune into all of these games this weekend, and we'll catch you next week.